Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be discussing and reviewing the Judicia from the Space Marine Codex. Before we do, a shout out to one of our long term followers on the channel, Jar S. Istik, for becoming a member of the Planet 40k YouTube channel. You can also join by clicking the join button below from a PC or Mac. I don't think it shows on a phone or a tablet. You gain access to a loyalty badge which upgrades every month along with the use of some custom emojis. So if you would like to get involved with donating and supporting the channel, that's one method of doing it. So okay, back to the video. It's one of the more newer releases which came with the launch of 9th edition, the Judicia. He comes in the elite section of the book. He's not a named character which a few people seem to get confused with. So you could have multiple of these going in one list, although it probably isn't worth it to have lots of them. So let's take a glance at the data sheet. So a model that costs 5 power level or 85 points. This won't change as there's no upgrade options available. In terms of his keywords, he's a character to make use of the lookout sir rules. And he can also take relics, which is quite handy. He's a Primaris model to gain use of some of those stratagems. And he's also an infantry model. So he can be getting into cover quite easily, making use of the terrain features. Stat wise, movement 6 inch, weapon skill 2 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 5, attacks 4, leadership 9, and a 3 plus save. So kind of a halfway house between a captain and a lieutenant in terms of stats, with the standout statistic being the weapon skill value of a 2 plus. Onto the abilities, you've got Angel of Death, which I'll display on the screen for you. Bolter Discipline and Thou Shall Know No Fear won't be needed unless there's some odd rules from enemy units that may ask you for some reason. Combat Doctrines and Shock Assault you'll definitely see some use out of. He then has Blade Parry, which grants him a 4 plus in one save against melee weapons only. So now he does really feel like a halfway house. And finally, the Telepomortis which is the main party piece and the reason you're fielding this model. So you select an enemy unit in the fight phase that is within 3 inches of this model. That unit cannot fight until all units in your entire army have done so. So this makes the character a very strong support unit for all sorts of units within the codex as you're fighting first with them. So this really means you're doing the damage first so when it comes to the enemy's turn to fight there's going to be less damage coming your way due to the fact that they're going to have less models. And also if you switch reverse it, if you were to fight last then of course you'd have less models to be dealing with all the damage in the first place so he's a real strong support, not only defensively, but offensively too. Also, the counter-offensive stratagem you can't use to counteract this ability. He doesn't just stay back and watch either, which transitions quite nicely into his war gear. So he comes stopped with an absorber bolt pistol and an executioner relic blade, then the frag and crack grenades on top, which you'll maybe use the frag grenade in front of a large infantry unit, such as pox walkers or guardians, for example. Otherwise, just use the pistol. So starting off with that pistol, it's got an 18 inch range, pistol one, strength five, minus one AP and two damage. So only a single shot, but it can be used within engagement range. Strength five wounds most infantry on threes, and a minus one AP gives a 50-50 roll against power armor. Then two damage can potentially clear off a marine model. It has a decent range to pop some shots off pre-combat, so it's not a bad pistol as far as pistols go, but it's not his bread and butter. You can opt to upgrade this with a relic, which is the Purgatorius. So you're basically replacing your Absorber Bolt pistol for a range 18 pistol, three strength five, minus three AP and two damage. So basically you're getting three shots instead of one and a much better AP at AP minus three. So it's a much more reliable weapon, putting power armor to a 6 plus armor save. Now you're very likely to kill a marine per turn with 3 shots. 2 on average are going to hit and likely wounding on 3s. So you should be getting a minimum of one of those getting through there. 2 if you're lucky. Then as mentioned, power armor now becomes a t-shirt save or no save in the assault doctrine as it will become a minus 4 AP. If you manage to use this for 4 turns, you should be getting your points back this way. That's the way I look at it. And we haven't even got to his melee side yet. So onto the melee, he's got an execution of Relic Blade, which is strength plus 3, making it strength 7, minus 3 AP and 2 damage. Each wound roll of a 6 will inflict one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. So he starts with 4 attacks base, so should be fighting first due to his ability, unless you've been charged by multiple threats at once. You should be getting another attack for Shock Assault, and then any extras from certain factions such as Blood Angels for example, giving even more. So for his breakdown, I'm going to go with 5 attacks as that's pretty likely with Shock Assault especially. So he's hitting on twos, which is great. So from the five attacks, he should net you an average of 4.2 hits. From those hits, you're going to wound infantry on threes. Unless it's toughness three infantry, then it's going to be twos. But they shouldn't really be your main target here because the damage is two. So wounding on threes nets you 2.8 wounds on average there. And from that roll, any six is going to be a mortal wound on top of the damage like we mentioned. I'm not sure how I feel about this ability because if you're against your prime target, which is infantry with two wounds such as space marines, and you stick a mortal wound on one, then you're still left with one wound. So it's still going to eat up one of the wound dice regardless to take the other wound off. 
So this is only really useful against one room models or larger models such as vehicles or monsters or maybe death guard perhaps as they're going to bring your relic blade down to a damage of one. Anyway back to the breakdown. It's going to put them on a 6 plus t-shirt save and you'll kill an average 2.3 of them. So two marines are dead in melee and one if you take the relic pistol meaning three marines should be removed from the table per turn. More so if it's the assault doctrine. So one turn alone almost pays his points back in terms of damage outlay so that's not too shabby. Moving away from the war gear, you've got the stratagem. So starting off with transhuman physiology, due to the fact that he's got the primaris keyword, so any unmodified room rolls of a 1, 2 or 3 will fail, regardless of the weapon's abilities. So that's going to cost you one command point. You do have access to gene route might to make any 6s to hit auto wound, but a model with only 5 attacks on the charge won't really warrant you spending that command point. Relic of the chapter for 1 CP to gain an additional relic in the army, handy as he's a character so he can carry one. Then hero of the chapter to add a warlord trait to a character that hasn't got one already for 1 CP. One of the warlord traits in particular is the Imperium Sword to reroll charges and get a plus 1 to his strength making his weapon strength 8 and gets an extra attack on top of that as well. And as always there's tons of chapter specific stratagems out there with great combos so let me know below if you know of any. Moving into chapter talk, we don't really deep dive into the chapters because that would be more like a movie rather than a 10-15 minute video. But here are a few that stand out. White Scars with the Lightning Assault to fall back and then charge on a new target so it's not going to be tied down to a unit which will be wasting your Teleport Mortis ability. So you can leave combat, move elsewhere and if you still need a little bit more range you can charge a new target to give yourself a better chance of being within 3 inches of that said unit. Black Templars to reroll charges with Righteous Zeal. And also gives a 5 plus Furno Pain save against Mortal Wounds, which could really help him because he's going to be up the board, possibly taking Smite attacks for example. Bloodthirst with the Blood Angels, always a strong candidate for a melee based army, with a plus 1 to the advance roll and charge rolls, and also a plus 1 to wound in melee on the charge. So helping against toughest 7 vehicles in particular, now wounding them on 3s. Which could turn into 2s if you've got that Imperium Sword Warlord trait. Now the Space Wars chapter tactics don't really affect him because a plus 1 to hit isn't really needed when he's got weapon skill 2. And heroic intervention, he's already a character so he doesn't need that. But Space Wolves are predominantly a melee based army. It's going to be a real huge assistance with all the melee units in battle. That's the ones that go pretty well with him. But in honesty, his ability can work in any chapter. As for unit synergy, librarians can cast the Veil of Time for the reroll to advance and charge rolls. It does let you fight first, but he kind of already has that. Might of Heroes is pretty cool on him, giving him plus one strength, so strength eight. Then a plus one to his toughness, making him toughness five. And then giving him another attack on top of that, putting him on six attacks with Shock Assault. That one in particular is pretty good value as you're getting three buffs for the price of one. Captains, lieutenants and chaplains are basically there to reroll hits and wounds and whatnot. Which are also good, but they work much better with units of guys rather than buffing a single character unit. Apothecaries, however, are good value as they grant a six plus Furno pain save and can heal him D3 wounds per turn with combat restoratives. So that's the synergies, now onto the tactics. Now he's quite slow and doesn't have access to anything such as a bike or a jump pack or even deep strike unless you're playing death watch and using the teleportarium stratagem. You only really have the impulsor tank as a fast method to get in but that can only carry 6 models maximum so you're going to have to go light. I prefer to slow creep your judicia in and make him more effective mid to late game, timing it quite nicely with the assault doctrine as I see him more of a second or third wave depending on your game size. He obviously needs to be with at least one melee unit to make use of the fight first buff so I'm thinking of units such as the blade guard veterans who are also quite slow without deep strike or jump pack methods. You could also pair well with a dreadnought such as the ironclad dreadnought for example or any dreadnought really ensuring your big smashing unit is fighting first likely resulting in a clean sweep in a single turn of combat. If you are aiding the big titan like fights then I'd probably keep the model just out of engagement range but still within three inches however with all the piling moves now he will likely get tags. It's a shame because on release this ability was actually at 6 inch range which is a lot more effective as he could still hide away from the fight and still cause problems. So let's talk about the good. He's pretty cheap for a sporting character, pretty decent damage output so should make his points back. A 4 plus in one save against melee paired with lookout server all is a decent combo. And finally his temper mortis ability is very effective and really puts your opponent off from charging when he's nearby. As for the bad, it doesn't really buff any of your units directly like a captain or a chaplain would. There's no win one saved against shooting attacks so it could be sniped off the board. He's pretty slow with no cheap or easy options to get in early. Then finally strength 7 is nice but look at that weapon, that deserves a strength 8 in my opinion. So after all said and done, today I'm going to be giving the Judicia a Planet 40k rating of 3 out of 5. <laughs> Guys drop a like on your exits and sub if you are new around here. Thank you all for watching and as always I'll see you in the next one.